LM Studio is the easiest way to power local open source large language models. You can get started. You don't need to know coding at all. It's super simple and has a gorgeous interface. And since the last time I made a video about them, they have released a ton of new functionality that we're gonna talk about today. So I'm gonna show you once again how to install it. I'm gonna briefly talk about it, but I'm mostly gonna focus on the new features. And the newest feature that they just launched is the ability to run multiple models simultaneously. And it is dead simple. I'm gonna show you how to do it. And I just wanna mention Again, if you haven't subscribed to my newsletter, please do so. I'll drop a link to that in the description below and you can get updates multiple times a week about all the latest AI news and updates. So if you don't already have LM Studio, it's awesome. You can download it at lmstudio.ai. They have a Mac version, a Windows version, and a Linux version now. So it is super easy to download and install. You simply click whatever operating system you have and download it and open it up and you're there. So I already made a tutorial all about LM Studio. I'll drop a link to that in the description below, but I'll briefly just recap what we talked about in that last video. So this is LM Studio. This main bar here searches Hugging Face for any large language model that you want. So for example, I type in Mixtral, hit enter, and there are all the different Mixtral models. LM Studio is amazing for people who are just getting into AI because it just makes it so easy. Look, for example, we have the Blokes version of Mixtral right here. We can see the number of likes, the number of downloads, when it was published 97 days ago. Then on the right side, here's where it gets really cool. It can actually estimate whether one of the quantized versions of the model is even going to fit on your computer based on your computer specs. One of the most common questions that I get in the comments in my Discord is, how do I know whether a model is gonna fit on my machine or whether it's gonna run really slowly or run at all? And so this makes that decision really easy. So you can see right here, it says likely too large for this machine, GPU offload may be possible, and green is the best full GPU offload possible. And as LM Studio has progressed as a product, they have added so much documentation right into the app itself. It just makes it so easy. So you'll find everywhere little places where you can hover over and see more information. So 3-bit K quantization, 4-bit quantization, and you may be thinking, okay, what does that actually mean? Well, they added a whole section right here about what are the difference between all of these files and which one should I choose? And then they, of course, link off to their even more in-depth documentation about it. So once you're ready to download, you come right here, you could see the file size. So this is 15 gigs and it's Mixtral 8x7B, and I just click the download button, right like that. And then all of a sudden, you'll see it's downloading right here. This blue bar below pops up, I click it, and I can see the download speed right here. So I don't wanna download this model right now, so I'm gonna cancel, but that's how you would do it, and I can just clear it like that. And you can search any model on Hugging Face. Every single one is available to you, so it just makes it so easy. Next, we're gonna go over to the AI chat tab over here on the left. We're gonna click it, and this should feel very familiar to you. It is just like ChatGPT, except it's local models. So it's your interface where you can actually play and try out different models. At the top, you're gonna select a model you wanna load. So let's do Gemma IT. This is the two billion parameter version that I've already downloaded. I'm testing it out because it's super small and is not gonna make my video laggy while I record. So I click that, it's gonna load the model up. And once it's done, it automatically selected the preset. But if it, for whatever reason it didn't do it properly, you can see all the different presets here. And that just sets all these more sophisticated settings on the right side. But it automatically detected which one I needed and did that. So I'm gonna leave everything else the same for now. And I'm gonna say, tell me a joke. What do you call a boomerang that won't come back? A stick. So very, very fast as you can see. And over here on the right side, they have a bunch of new features which are new to me as well. So they have branch conversation, which allows you to duplicate the conversation and branch it to a new chat that ends on this message. So if you're doing a lot of testing, a lot of QA, this is a great feature for that. You can copy the message, you can edit this message, and you can delete the message as well. You can also simply regenerate the response by clicking right here. And then you can also continue if you get a really long response, but you don't 
don't have a big enough context window, you can just click continue and it'll continue outputting that response. At the bottom, we get a bunch of information that is super helpful. Time to first token. We have the speed, so 20 tokens per second, which is great. The number of CPU threads, the number of GPU layers, et cetera, et cetera. Now on the right side is a bunch more settings that you can play around with. And I'm not gonna go through each one of them. They have very good descriptions next to each one that you can play with. And they have advanced configuration. You can also set your system prompt here if you want, but we're gonna click into hardware settings. And right here, since I'm on an Apple machine, I can use Apple Metal support. Click that, I have to reload the model, and then it should be a lot faster. So the last time we did it without Apple Metal support, and actually I'm gonna max out the layers right there. So last time we did it, it was 20 tokens per second. Let's see if we regenerate it now, what we get. Now it's at 73 tokens per second. So you can see using some of their built-in hardware acceleration really helps the inference speed. So I encourage you to try this out, play around with it, all these different settings in here. Okay, but now what I'm really excited about is their playground. So click over to the playground and what the playground allows you to do is load multiple models at the same time. This is something that Olama previously did really well and now LM Studio offers it. So let's go do that. So I have two models right here. I have Gemma and Mistral and I can simply load them up. But before I do that, I actually want to show you one last thing. So we're going to click a model to load right there. I'm going to select Gemma and then here's the name of the model. And this is kind of a verbose name. And this is also what is gonna be used to identify the model in the API. So if I wanted to do something a lot simpler, I can just simply do Gemma. And that'll be the model identifier in the API. Or if I have multiple versions of Gemma, I can do Gemma 1. And I think that's just a lot cleaner than this identifier right there. You also select your preset here, but of course it automatically detects it and it tells you the model parameters as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of there. I'm gonna reload the two models I have here. I have Gemma Mat and Mistral Mat, and those will load up. So Gemma was really fast because it's only a two billion parameter model, and Mistral Mat is a little bit slower because it's a seven billion parameter model. But both of them will be loaded into memory simultaneously. And you can see the RAM usage right here, which is really nice to see. Okay, now that they're both loaded, we're using a total of 7.32 or about seven gigabytes of the 32 I have available. So technically, I could probably load up between five and 10 Gemma models at the same time and let them collaborate with each other. So you can start getting the idea that if you have multiple models running at the same time, collaborating with each other, you can actually extract a lot higher quality outputs from each of these models. And I'm gonna touch more on that in another video that I'm gonna put out soon. Here you can add your custom instructions if you need that. And another brand new feature that they're offering is JSON mode. So if you always want these models to output JSON, let's say because you're building some application powered by these models, this is how you would do it. And you just select JSON mode enabled. And on the right side is where we can test everything out. Now the JSON being enabled only goes so far. If the model itself is not great at outputting JSON, there's only so much LM Studio can do with it, but I found it to be actually pretty darn good. So before I show you anything else, I wanna show you this. On the right side, we have our chat interface, and I'm simply gonna say, tell me a joke. I turned JSON mode off for now, just to show you it working. So I click start, and it's gonna do it sequentially. So first it started with Gemma, and then it went to Mistral. What do you call a boomerang that won't come back? A stick. And why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make everything up. Now, one thing I really liked is the fact that as you're hovering over it, it actually selects or highlights which model you're using over here as well and vice versa. And we can see over here, the model's running at 78 tokens per second for Gemma and 35 tokens per second for Mistral. Okay, but now I wanna show it to you with JSON turned on. So if I turn JSON on, we're gonna hit send again and it's gonna do its best, but as you could see, it didn't really work all that well. And what I found works even better, and I wanna thank the founder of LM Studio for telling me about this, is simply in the prompt describing that you want JSON. Tell me a joke, make sure you output JSON. And then I'm gonna hit send again. And now this is a little better. Now the JSON is different in both of them, right? In, the, in, in terms of the structure that they're using. So here we have setup and punchline. Here we have joke, and then within the joke, setup and punchline but I can actually specify what I want. So I'll say the top level of the JSON should be joke and then the setup and punchline are elements within joke. So let's see how that does. Okay, so 
Mistral got that right, but Gemma didn't. And I, you know, not, not super surprised there. I've played around with this and I've got them both to do pretty darn well. Obviously, just play around with the prompts. That's not the point of what I'm showing you right now. Now, another setting that's really cool is this right here. So they not only allow you to run these models at the same time in a serialized way, so one after another, but you can actually run them at the same time. And if you have a powerful enough computer, you can actually do it. So my computer is decently powerful. Let's test that out. This is a little bit dangerous. So if you have kind of a lower end machine, I would not recommend doing it. So we're gonna deselect disable sequential sending, and let's try again. All right, so there we go. Still pretty fast, and they both ran at the exact same time on my little laptop. I absolutely love it, but I don't really have a need for that right now, so I'm gonna turn that back on. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is throttling. With throttling, what the LM Studio team has found is that if you have too many models loaded up, and for example, you want to run them all in parallel, they start to get really aggressive against your CPU. And if you wanna prevent any kind of CPU lag, you use this throttle right here. So you can throttle from zero, which basically means there's not gonna be any throttling at all, all the way up to 100%, which means there'll be a lot of throttling. Obviously that will slow down computation, but it's better than having a bunch of lag on your machine. So it is by default set to 50%, so go ahead and try it out. Okay, next I wanna show you multiple models powered and available through an API. So right on this same playground page, we're gonna come down here and we're gonna click start server. And now we have a server running just like this with the endpoints models, completions, and these mimic the ChatGPT API. And we can hit these endpoints and get the models that are running in parallel, or we can get chat completions and we can actually specify the model we want to do the completions on this single endpoint, which is really nice. Okay, so down here at the bottom, it says list loaded models using the get endpoint. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the curl command. I'm gonna switch over to my terminal. I'm gonna paste in that curl command and, it as, and it's as simple as this, curl, the localhost endpoint v1 slash models. And here it is. So we see Gemma Matt and Mistral Matt, the two models that are running actively right now. Switching back to LM Studio, we're gonna grab this command right here, which is actually going to allow us to identify and use a specific model for the completion. So I'm gonna click copy, switch back to our terminal, and this is the completions endpoint. So just exactly like ChatGPT, except we have this additional flag right here, and we're gonna say Gemma Matt. And so we have the system message, the user message, we have temperature, max token stream, and then I'll hit enter. And this is streaming, that's why you're seeing so much output. And so this was all done with Gemma Matt. And if I wanted to, I can easily switch that to be Mistral Matt. And then I just hit enter. And now it's using the other model. And it's just instant. It doesn't need to swap it out of memory. These are both loaded into memory. It is so cool. Now LM Studio has a cool collaboration with Autogen, another fantastic agent framework. And built into it now, you can actually say the API key is LM Studio. And you could specify the model that you want to use per agent. So it is really, really cool. So you can power different agents using different models all in parallel, just like this. And I believe it'll actually work the same way with Crew AI. So as you're setting up your model, right here, you have your OpenAI API base, you just plug in localhost. And for the model name, you simply put the model name, this is all standardized at this point. So just the same way in Crew AI, you can have different agents powered by different models. So I can't wait to dive in and play around more with this. LM Studio is an incredible product. I highly recommend you download it and give it a try yourself. It is the easiest way to download open source models and get it up and running on your machine quickly. You don't need to worry about any of the complexities of running these models locally. And I wanna do some building with it as well. So if you wanna see me build something with different models, powering agents, let me know in the comments. I would love to, and I would love to hear your ideas. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.